up next, a close personal friend of mine from Austin, Texas, Mr. Joe Stats. What you guys want to talk about? You want to talk about fitness. <laughs> Let's do this. I don't know what you guys did today, but even though I was on the road, I still had to stop by a gym and blast out my pecs so I could look awesome for the show. I hit the gym, I did some bench press, I did some curls, I did some tricep extensions, I did some pull ups, I did some chin ups. Like you need the microphone to hear me anyway. <laughs> hello, hello. I think I broke everything. <laughs> Too much muscle! I put it to this microphone! <laughs> Maybe this microphone can handle my strength. <laughs> I don't know what you're thinking, this guy's all upper body. No way, bro! No way! I work out everything! Got on that squat rack, did some squats, did some air squats, did some lunges, did some kettlebells, whatever those are. <laughs> what you're witnessing right now is whenever you talk about working out in public, you sound like an asshole. <laughs> I drink too much to ever work out. Drinking is my favorite holiday. <laughs> you can do that shit seven days a week. You ever drink so much you break into an orphanage and try to set the kids free? <laughs> You ever drink so much you still think there's orphanages? <laughs> Those aren't a thing anymore. Turns out it was just a children's hospital and I was kicking indoors. You're free now, go! Why is your head shaved? <laughs> Turns out they was a fan. <laughs> like I've been going out way too much and drinking lately, so I decided I need to stay home and uh, like I just drink red wine and pretend I'm being healthy. <laughs> And the other day I got halfway through my first glass of red wine and I looked down and there's 15 dead fruit flies floating in it. I'm like, where the fuck did they come from? And I look around and it turns out I bought produce I didn't use a couple days ago. I'm like, God damn it, don't ever do that. Don't ever buy vegetables. It will destroy your kitchen for like a month. <laughs> but I learned two things that night. One, fruit flies love the taste of red wine. And two, I don't mind the taste of fruit flies. <laughs> It's like crushing crush it on the eyes, help pace yourself. Oh man. So for this next joke, I have a girlfriend. Um, I got out of the shower the other day, and I remembered how hilarious the movie Silence of the Lambs was. And so, and so I was gonna reenact a scene, so I tucked my dick between my legs, and I got walking out while she's watching TV, and I was like, do you wanna fuck me? I'd fuck me. And that's creepy as shit, right? <laughs> but what makes it a thousand times creepier? If your girlfriend's never seen Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> True story. Um, I've been dating this girl for a couple years now and people are always like, you know, when are you gonna pop the question? I'm like, why buy the cow when you can beg it every two weeks not to leave you? <laughs> So I've discovered when you're watching your best friend's apartment for the weekend, the funniest text message you can send him is, Do you have a fire extinguisher? <laughs> then you immediately follow that with, Never mind, it's too late. Oh, I learned this while being on the road. Um, I learned that it, you can get your teeth way cleaner instead of putting uh, the toothpaste on the uh, toothbrush if you just put it directly on the guy's dick you're going to suck. You never even thought about it that way. That's why all our dicks are minty fresh tonight. And I got an extra five bucks. Oh man. So this tour, uh, a few days ago, we were in maybe the worst place to exist in all of this country, and that's Gainesville, Florida. <laughs> I don't know if you've been to that shithole before, but that's where the ignorance of the deep south combines with the arrogance of the east coast to form a super asshole that you can't reason with. <laughs> Black out and I'm not still in 
Gainesville, am I? <laughs> oh my god, every fucking conversation in that town just ended with, No, fuck you, motherfucker! Yeah, you're right, you're better than me. Sorry, I'll leave. Have fun with the fest. Enjoy your crusty punks with dogs. With extension cord leashes. Anyway. <laughs> I got to listen to punk rock my entire life, but something I've never been able to figure out is where you buy the little metal studs to put in the back of your jacket to make you punk rock. Like, I can only imagine there's some sort of punk rock bedazzler kit you have to buy. There's some, like, 12-year-old punk rock kid sitting at home like, Punk rock will never die! Click. <laughs> All right, Mom, take me to Hot Topic so I can be rebellious. Anybody wearing Hot Topic stuff in here tonight? <laughs> oh man, they're our sponsor. <laughs> they gave us lots of stickers to put on my minivan. <laughs> oh man, I don't know if they have these signs across the country, but they definitely have them in Texas and I know a few other states, but they've got these signs outside of uh, like police stations and firehouses and hospitals. They're like these baby drop zone signs. These are real, like it's a place where you can leave a baby, like no questions asked. It just turns out there's a little stipulation behind that. It turns out, you gotta be your baby. Yeah, can't be that neighbor's kid that won't shut the fuck up. You live and learn though. But uh, speaking of kids nobody wants, I ran into my dead baby's mama the other day. That joke cost me $600 to write. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding, Jesus, we went halfsies on the Avo. Makes you feel less guilty when you give it a cute name. <laughs> I'm like, I think they need a hoarding show for children. And in case you misunderstand me, I don't think they need a show for kids to collect too much shit. I think they need a show for parents that collect too many kids. Because if you look at the trailer parks across America, all these white trash kids are suffering from all the same thing all these animal hoarding fuckheads are suffering from. Like, they're not being fed properly. They're not being groomed. None of them are being spayed or neutered. Like, we're about two generations away of the white trash of America being feral. If I wanted to be racist, I'd say Mexican, but I did not do that. I'm better than you. Thank you. Oh, like, I think the show that's leading to the downfall of our society is a show that exists on MTV called 16 and Pregnant. And I don't know if you've seen the show before, but if you haven't, just say the title again. That's what it's about. <laughs> Sums up everything. A girl in high school, 15, 16 years old, gets pregnant. About halfway through the episode, her boyfriend leaves her. She gives birth to the baby with no job, quit high school, no prospects of a future. And she's like, I'll figure it out. And then cartoon graphics. <laughs> and that's not the worst part about that show. The worst part about that show is that they cast for that show. Meaning there are thousands of high school girls purposely trying to get pregnant in hopes of being cast on that show. And guess what? Most of them don't make it. That's the reason I want to have my own show. And that show is called 16 and Pregnant for two weeks. <laughs> don't worry, we'll do the update episode. Relax. <laughs> we'll get that girl all confused on stage. Like, uh, I don't know why I'm still here. I uh, took care of the problem. <laughs> Like, are you still with your high school boyfriend? She's like, who the fuck stays with their high school boyfriend? I don't even like guys that wear Affliction t-shirts anymore. <laughs> Second part of that joke I just came up with. The worst part about that show is that I watch that show religiously so much just so I can feel better about my life. I'm like, I didn't do that. Sorry, crowd of kids. <laughs> I get to be a degenerate alcoholic the rest of my life and not be a bad person. Welcome to Austin. <laughs> Leave your kids at home, even if you have them. What else do I want to talk about that? I did all that. Oh, yeah. Um, my perceptions of love got distorted by the plethora of 80s John Hughes romantic high school comedies I grew up watching. Don't judge me. I thought love was real. <laughs> Like the pretty and pink, can't buy me love, say anything. They teach you you gotta do something crazy to get that girl. But I'll let you know, when you get to be my age and you hold a radio outside a girl's window at four in the morning, you do not get that girl. You do, however, get arrested. Maybe you're supposed to know the girl. 
And sorry, punk rock crowd, but I like to hook up with hipster chicks. But it's only so I can get them out of their stupid clothes. <laughs> I hooked up with this girl a while back. We go back to her place, because you don't put, take crazy back to yours. And uh, we go back to her place and I take off her culottes. You heard correctly. <laughs> I took off her culottes and she had Hello Kitty panties on. And I'm like, great, new fetish, children's clothing. It's not a new fetish. Anyway, I took off her panties and I was going to go down on her. And she covers it and she goes, say Hello Kitty. And I'm like, I'm going to move your hand. And she goes, no, talk to it. And after a while, I realized she wanted me to treat her vagina like it was an actual kitten. And so I did. I played with a piece of string in front of it for a little bit. And I did the next logical thing. I put it in a trash bag and I threw it in the river. That joke makes a lot of sense as long as you don't think about it. <laughs> if you can't tell from those past few jokes, I'm not good with women. Shocking, right? Like, if I wanted to brag, I could say I've had a lot of one night stands, but in reality, I just can't convince a woman to sleep with me more than once. <laughs> like, I played a woman having a one night stand with me, much like when I get drunk and go to Taco Bell. We both just wake up in the morning and go, I can't believe I put that inside me. It's not even real meat. <laughs> Ladies, I've got a great idea for a tattoo for you. I think you should get a tattoo of a basset hound on your torso and have the eyes of the basset hound be your breast. Hear me out. That way, the older you get, the sadder the basset hound gets. <laughs> All right, final joke, guys. <laughs> final joke. <laughs> and I know what, uh, actually, I'm gonna do two more jokes because they're both bragging about my awesome dick. Guys, we gotta stop sending out dick pics. It's an epidemic, it's out of control, it's 100% illegal, and nothing looks impressive on a four inch screen. That's why if you're gonna do it, you gotta do it the way I do it. And I sent pictures of my lip dick to my ex-girlfriend with the caption that just says, See, I'm totally over you. <laughs> and I send those four times a day. And that's how revenge works. If you have no idea how revenge works. So I like to wear Magnum condoms when I fuck. Yeah. Does it make my dick look like it's wearing a Snuggie? <laughs> Looks like a puppy crawling underneath the covers. It's adorable. That joke works because my head looks like a dick. <laughs> anyway, that's going to be my set, guys. This next guy's coming up to the stage in front of the Cape Fear Comedy Festival. Just got eaten by an alligator. Let's give it up for J.Y. Cotton.